Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation. This is August 115 speaking. Finally, let me welcome you for the third time in the catacombs. We are now in the upper level and we have managed to uh, press the button over here which enabled us to put this beneath support pillar in its place, meaning that now that we step on this tile, it is not lowering, it is stable. This will allow us to move this pillar across and open up the path into the actual catacombs. I'm really looking forward to this because this is the real full proper big tomb raiding level of the Alexandria location. It is huge, it is absolutely enormous and also quite dangerous. It's very likely that I will end up using a health pack here or maybe even dying. Oh dear goodness gracious. You know, I I'm probably gonna spoil the, su spoil the surprise, the reason I'm gonna die is uh, rope swinging. Um, probably the worst uh, offender of rope swinging is at the relative beginning of this level, so you know, at least we are gonna get it out of the way <laughs> sooner rather than later. Okay, now the moment you push this pillar onto its place, something creepy will happen. An elemental will actually appear from the pillar, so keep holding the crouch button right now. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. It's kind of scary when you imagine it's been inside this entire time. Now run inside, because I'm gonna lead you to a very interesting statue that will cause the elemental's demise. Uh, okay, these guys cannot be doused in water or anything like that. It's this hilarious looking bird statue that will cause it to explode. Full disclosure, I'm gonna consider this a kill. Ah, satisfying. So, we pretty much lure them into an explosive trap. That's what's going on. I'm not sure if they're imprisoned in the statue. It really looks more like, well, they pretty much are just shattered to pieces. Ah, very satisfying and very deserved because these guys can easily chip away half of your health just like that if they so decide. Now, there are a lot of urns in here, but uh, all of them are, you know, you don't have to destroy because there's nothing inside. And there are also these bronze urns, which... Uh, if you take a closer look, bullets ricochet from them. You cannot even use explosives to destroy them. These things are a true marvel of engineering. They cannot be destroyed in any shape or form. So, just like that. Now, uh, the corridor I led you into just contains the statue and empty urns. It is pretty much just to get rid of the air elemental. And uh, this is where we arrived from. So, I basically led you to the right section over here, looping over here right so that's it there is one more path at the crossroads and behind this door which we cannot open this will actually be a way back from a different part of the catacombs so again i just got rid of a couple of urns and the only thing we can do is just go down and again i'm probably just gonna rotate lara as we do this because come on it's fun okay now be very quick on your toes and sprint forward because this is a trap the ceiling will come crashing forward press the action key oh quickly quickly Oh, there it is. It was a close call. And welcome to the main area of the catacombs. We get a cool sweeping shot of the place. Wow. Ah, see that? Two ropes. Uh, yeah, you know what's up ahead. First of all, let me just make one thing clear. Uh, the ledge you see behind us, that is again one of the ways back into this area of the catacombs. The ladder you see here, you cannot actually use to jump onto the ledge here. A backflip will not carry you that far. It's just to reach the bottom of this room safely from that particular area. We will use it soon enough once we'll be heading back. But first, let's get rid of the most annoying part of the level. So the objective here, and you know what, let me use my binox again. The objective here is to grab this rope and swing to grab that rope over there and then use that to reach the end of this area. This is basically a ladder which will enable you to descend safely over there, which is the entrance into the Temple of Poseidon. But more importantly, it will allow you to enter the right and the left part of the catacombs where we need to collect four essential key items to do anything in Temple of Poseidon. Now, what I'm more interested in is this ledge over here. This actually leads to the first secret of the level. In order to get across to that rope safely, I found one relatively reliable way of doing that. I do not understand it, but at least I know how to do it, so I'm gonna show you. So first things first, grab this rope, and it's important to stabilize it. The best way to stabilize a rope is to climb up as much as you can, because the swinging momentum will be limited. But, you know, don't worry if you don't manage to 100% stabilize a rope, to my knowledge that's not possible. 
just wait for a while until the movements will pretty much become barely noticeable. Even the sound effects will soon dissipate, and that's your hint. Of course, so, so, so you can see the small back and forth happening there, right? I think this is enough. So now, let's get to the bottom of the rope. And before we start swinging, you might be thinking, okay, now we, all we need to do is just align Lara precisely to aim at that rope. You would be wrong. I don't know what exactly is causing this, but if you align Lara exactly to that rope, she will always misjump slightly to the right, and I have no idea why this keeps repeatedly happening here. This is why this is so tough. So, we're gonna predict that and compensate for that by tilting Lara a bit more to the left. Mm, maybe her head's width would be perfect. Yeah, that's too much. Okay, that should be it. Now I'm gonna swing forward. And we're gonna make a jump from this rope into the other one. Okay. Oh, perfect. See, we were not uh, precisely aligned to reach the second rope. You need to tilt Lara a bit more to the left. Again, I have no idea why, but this is the most reliable way I have found. I'm sad that I don't understand it, but I am glad I managed to show you, and you know, feel free to try that out and let me know the results. Now, you can just make a relatively easy jump onto that platform over there and get down, but of course we are in it for all the secrets as well. So. The rope is more or less stabilized, it's still swinging left and right a little, but that shouldn't interfere too much. What we need to do is grab the crawl space over there. Okay, oh, thank you, Lara. This is, again, a very unpredictable jump. Sometimes she manages to do a sufficient one, sometimes she doesn't, and I don't particularly know why. Okay, and that's the sweet secret chime. Uh, it's actually quite generous. Again, you get another shotgun opportunity in case you don't have it, rewarding you with uh, 10 shotgun shells. Uh, sorry, 6, but uh, also flares, which are relatively rare, and a large health pack. Now, what I haven't talked about yet is what did we get by picking up the crossbow, since there are three different ammunition types. Uh, I reloaded one of my earlier saves, I have tested it. When you pick up a crossbow, you don't get any poison or explosive ammo, you get 10 normal crossbow shots, which is... Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, but I just wanted to be absolutely sure. And you're gonna take a minor damage falling here, but it's not no biggie. Okay, perfect. So, uh, let me first explain what's going on down here now that we are down here and destroy the urns in the process. So, if you take a few steps here, you will enter the Temple of Poseidon. To do anything in the Temple of Poseidon, you will need four key items, the so-called tridents. Currently, we only have a crowbar. Now, they're not tridents per se, they're more like tips of tridents. And you might be thinking, you know, you find one and you are like, okay, we're ready to go to the Temple of Poseidon. No, you need four of them, which is brutal. And as I said, the ladder over there is uh, used to get back down here. You cannot go up. So now, facing the Temple of Poseidon entrance, you have the choice between the right path and the left path. Now, you can tackle this in any order you want. I find the left path a bit more difficult and right path a bit more enjoyable, so I naturally want to save it up for later. Plus, there are three secrets clustered together in the third path, also with an optional Coastal Ruins exit. So I find it more efficient to do that later. So first of all, I'm going to tackle the more annoying and difficult and uh, health-draining left path. You'll see what I mean. That wasn't the last air elemental we have seen. Oh boy, no. And over here we are going to find the very first urn that actually contains a goodie. It's the... yeah, it's that one. So white shots from that. Let me just... Ah, it's difficult to align her when you have weapons drawn out. Okay, thank you, Lara. And make a running jump over here, otherwise I think it would require grabbing because of the low ceiling. Pick them up and you can now safely slide down the chute. If you're not gonna hold the action key here, Lara will hit her head, which just isn't cool, so I prefer to hold it. And before I explain to you this area and what's in the water over there, let's first of all get rid of a skeleton, which should spawn in a sec. Do we have white shots equipped? Good, we do. We don't want to waste the good ammunition. There we go. Oh my god, how did that happen? Now that was just embarrassing. I just wanted to blast him as we are jumping. Okay, again. I swear this never happened. Please trust me, please. My reputation is at stake. I'm also worried because he's likely to just fall because of his own clumsiness, you know? Ah, 
Ah, usually it takes one shot to get him down. God damn it. That was a costly fall. Well, down he goes. <laughs> Scout and taken care of. Now that we're on equal footing, we can probably even destroy the urn over here. More white shots in there. And make it back across. So there are two levers that we need to pull in this area. The first we are gonna encounter right here. Okay, perfect. Are you aligned, Lara? Oh, thank you very much. And now we see these stone blocks protruding. We are going to use them as footholds, which is very good. You can actually make just a... <sighs> Lara, I was holding the jump key. Come on, don't do this to me, girl. Uh, I was about to say you can make a standing jump and a running jump to reach the other one, which I wanted to demonstrate up until this happened. By the way, this is something I've been uh, noticing on the PC version of Tomb Raider 4, and I'm not sure if it's caused just by my particular laptop I'm using, but there is a certain delay to responses uh, in the PC version of Tomb Raider 4 that I haven't encountered in Tomb Raider 3, 2 or 1, and I'm not entirely sure what's causing it. I haven't had these problems when I paid, uh, played uh, the PS1 version, so it's just a weird thing. There is also one ladder in this catacombs level, which I consistently cannot grab even if I'm holding the action key. Just to give an example, I'll point out which ladder I mean. So I'm always a bit more worried about the controls in this game. Anyway, we picked up the white shots, and now that you step here, a skeleton will spawn. Now, this guy has a tendency to jump around up until he'll fall into the water. This I would not consider a kill, so I want to do away with him quickly. And you might be wondering why I don't want to just blast him with the white shots from here. From here, the pellets will not reach him. They will not knock him down. You need to be much closer. So instead, I'm going to use an explosive arrow to do away with him. Just to be sure, you know, we kill him and he's not going to kill himself. Almost sounds like we are taking care of him, doesn't it? <laughs> but now you can see why the explosive arrows, this is the first time I used one, are superior. They pretty much fly in a straight line, you know, they are not lopped like uh, the grenades from the grenade launcher in a weak way. Actually, I believe the grenade launcher in Tomb Raider 2 worked like explosive arrows do in the crossbow here in Tomb Raider 4. Basically, they fly straight. It was Tomb Raider 3 that nerfed the grenade launcher a little, which is fair enough since they offered the rocket launcher alternative. Okay, elemental spawns here, no way to avoid most of this damage. But let's make a jump. Okay, and into the pool, because under the water here is where a statue is, where we are aiming at. So, get close to the statue and you should be safe, he should not deal any damage. But sometimes when trying to push the lever, the air elemental enters exactly what he does now, starts rotating around Lara and he can chip away as much as three quarters of her health in just like two seconds or something, it's insane. Now, if you're wondering where the second tunnel leads, it's actually a way back into this pool in case we fall down much later on, which, considering how unresponsive the controls have been so far, is very likely I'll need, but uh, I'm hoping not. We'll see. Okay, so by now you know the drill, you know where to climb up. Okay, and, oh, actually, this is, I think, the first time we see a proper example of Greek architecture in Tomb Raider 4, and this confuses many people, so j just a disclaimer, uh, Alexandria was a combination of uh, Greek, Egyptian and later on Roman architecture and uh, clash of cultures and that sort of thing. Some of the deities from uh, the gods pantheon even sort of combined, their names combined, their motives combined, that sort of thing. It's actually really cute in a way, so that's why you see this and I think it's a great idea to set a different cultural setting in a game that's happening in a single cultural setting, if that makes sense. So, you know, you are not just fed up with all the Egyptian motives. Now, I couldn't be fed up with Egyptian motives, I love them too much, but some of you might. So, uh, you know, it adds variety. And in the very least, if you're not particularly keen on the Greek ones, even though they are a nice shout out to Tomb Raider 1, you will find it refreshing once you re-encounter the Egyptian ones again. Oh, and this is actually reflected in the skeletons themselves. If you notice, these guys are wearing bronze armor, helmets, and a bit different shields than the one uh, in the coastal ruins that we encountered. So this is really interesting, and there are three kinds of skeletons we are going to encounter in Alexandria. Okay. 
And we are gonna get another opportunity for a closer look. First, let me destroy these jars. And again, as I said, if you drop into the water here, you can swim back. That's the second tunnel, tunnel leading into that area. But now, let's be very quick in destroying one particular jar. Yep, even the music is stressful. And again, I'm gonna draw the crossbow and use the explosive arrow to kill two skeletons. One lying down and one will jump here with one shot. Come on, gentlemen. Ah, there they are. Again, you could have seen these glimpses and hints of the bronze armor they are wearing. I think they're Greek skeletons or something like that. Now, I want to be very quick to blast this guy off with a shotgun before he'll kill himself. Because, again, it's, it's very easy for them to do that. They are rather clumsy. Okay. Whoa, that was impressive, Lara. Not necessary, but impressive nevertheless. Okay, and now... <laughs> Just never gets old. Now, I want to show you something absolutely fascinating. See the tile where we are standing right now? There is absolutely nothing here. But if you destroy the jar I'm aiming at, the box of shotgun shells appears. Why? I don't know, this is so weird. I, I have no explanation for this. It's not dependent on any of the other jars. I didn't see this happening at any other point in the entire game, but there it is. Just like that, uh, a box of shotgun shells will appear. I have no clue why. And there we go, this is our first piece of the trident. So you might be wondering, oh my god, it took this long to get the first one, and there are three more to go. Is the level really so huge? It is huge, but the rest of them are, uh, you know, a bit clustered together, so don't worry. First, let's... Yeah, I prefer to hold the action key here, just not to hit Lara's head. And you know what? Before I'm gonna explain what's going on down there, uh, over there, because that's very interesting as well, let me show you what's actually in this bottomless pit. So many opportunities to fall down. So, I'm gonna do something that should be reminiscent of the Valley of Kings secret. Again, Lara will just glitch down in the ladder like that. Don't know why. Okay, thankfully she can still re-grab. And now we are going to get our hands on more bolts and shells. Let's light up a flare here. And there are two urns you can destroy here. Uh, one is entirely pointless, nothing inside, but the other one contains a box of regular shotgun shells. So let's take care of that business now. There it is. Let's pick up what's rest of the flare. By the way, the, the flare picking up animation is really slow. It's the same one used in Tomb Raider 2 and 3, you know? They sped up the pickup animations um, in Tomb Raider 4 for like regular objects, but even back in the days of Tomb Raider 2 and 3, the flare's re-pickup was always very slow, and this one they kept. And that's all there is. There are so many uh, empty hallways down there, but all of them are carved out into the stone just to provide Lara with an opportunity to fall down from up top and break her neck. Nothing more interesting in there. Now, what's, uh, what's around the corner I'm a bit terrified about? Uh, I will explain in a sec. There are actually four more skeletons we can destroy in this tiny room. I know it's insane. It's full of them. Seth's apparitions. Well, that's an understatement, Jean-Yves. Okay, you have to step here, and this way you will summon up another skeleton appearing where we just were, uh, climbing out of the ladder. Ah, there he is, Lara already aiming. Okay, perfect. Sometimes we actually blast him so far that he ends up landing on a ledge and in a safety. It's almost like we're helping him. It's always funny when that happens. Feel free to destroy the jars, you don't need to. It's the ledge above that's gonna trigger something interesting. So. First things first, uh, you don't need to pick up the large health pack that's on the ledge over there. All it takes is just to climb up and step on this tile. This will cause three more skeletons to appear in three different places in the room. Oh, there they are, and one yeah, across. So what I want to do before they all fall down because they're clumsy is I'm gonna use Lara's sexy legs to lure them here so that they all get grouped up together. Okay, that's two, and there is a third one. It's gonna get here any moment, I presume. Perfect. Grenade launcher, Lara. Oh! <sighs> that was a close call, and see this? Oh, small health pack. This, my friends, is the reason why when I'm doing my trial runs of Tomb Raider 4, I destroy every single skeleton I see with an explosive weapon. Let me explain. 
The third skeleton that appeared in that part of the room and jumped all the way here to be grouped up with his other two friends, when he's destroyed only with an explosive weapon, he drops a small health pack, a skeleton that drops a supply, an actual pickup, an item. This is unheard of. And here's the really funny part. If you knock him down, the small health pack will not appear. I try this. I knocked him down. I marked the spot with a flare where he dropped down. I then used the ladder to get down. There was nothing. You only get it if you blast him away with an explosive weapon. So this makes me paranoid because I want to know if other skeletons drop something, right? So whenever I'm doing my trial runs, I destroy all the skeletons I see with explosive weapons to make absolutely sure they don't drop something. Now, I have done this for all the Alexandria levels, for all the skeletons. To my awareness, this is the only skeleton that drops an item. So all the other ones, you can knock down with your shotgun and not worry about missing items, okay? So let me do that work for you, just so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, again, this, this is something I found out that the other walkthroughs don't mention. Actually, I've seen some of them mention that the small health bag appears when you destroy the jars and urns. That's not true, as you could have seen. We destroyed all of them, there was no small health bag. It was when we blasted the three skeletons that the health bag appeared. So, yeah, uh, more problems for me, but nothing for you to worry about. If you see me knocking down a skeleton, please note that I have already tried destroying them with explosive weapon and they drop nothing. So, that's a knowledge you can have safely. Yeah, this guy just sidesteps twice and gets stuck in that urn over there. Oh, you bastard. So the reason I'm doing this is I don't... Lara? <clears throat> My god, your aim is terrible. I didn't want to use an explosive weapon to get uh, rid of him, you know, since there is a pit for us to knock him down. But it actually took two swipes of his rusted blade at us. I'm not a fan of that. I really want to finish this level without using a health pack. I think it's still doable, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Mm, we'll see. I mean, we, we have to all got rid of both the air elementals, so the worst is behind us. Okay, and let's jump back safely. Now, there are a lot of urns in here, but there is only one that interests us. Because that one contains explosive arrows, the others I'm just going to destroy because I enjoy it greatly. There it is. Yeah, they really give you a lot of explosive ammunition. I guess it's... They thought many players will not figure out you can knock down the skeletons and they thought maybe that's a two of a cruel mechanic, so they want to ensure you have a steady supply, something like that. I don't know, I can only theorize. Okay, and again, up we go. And this actually is a tricky jump and it's very easy to die here. Uh, you'll need to do a backflip. However, I'm not sure if I can show it. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. There is a bit of a piece of a low ceiling, so if you backflip, Lara can hit her head and fall down. So, you know, make sure you backflip when you're not entirely up with Lara's entire body, or she will hit her head. And now we're gonna enter a very familiar area. This is the crossroads from the very beginning, where we encountered the first elemental. Now we're also welcomed by a skeleton pal, which we can knock down. Simple. So that's it. Now, if you want, you can basically go to the right and return to the coastal ruins and refill Lara's health. I would recommend you do that. I'm, of course, not going to do that because I follow my stupid and arbitrary rule of not changing instances within a single video. But, you know, you do that. It's a good habit to develop. And again, let's lure him into the edge so we can knock him down into the abyss. Yeah, two blasts should do it. Perfect. Ah, we could see tiny speckles of dust as he was hitting the floor. Okay, something. That's the closest look we actually got so far on skeletons being disintegrated upon falling. And now the only path forward, you know, since we already triggered the trap and this whole thing has disappeared, the bridge, is to use the ladder over here. Those of you who really have a keen eye might have noticed that there were already two skeletons down there waiting for us. Since we have nowhere to knock them down, guess what, I'm again gonna use a grenade launcher. Oh, the group top. Why am I so clumsy? I just keep inviting them to slash us with those rusted blades. God damn it, I'm not doing great, am I, health-wise? 
Wow, okay. And again, let me explain. The reason why I'm using grenades to destroy them rather than the explosive arrows, again, is that the explosive arrows are better than grenades in every possible way. They're not better than super grenades, but better than normal. So if I'm gonna use an explosive, I'm gonna use the worst one, so to speak. Okay. Cool. So now we have two tridents, which means there's the second half of the catacombs left to explore. Now, it's gonna be shorter, but it's gonna be full of stuff, full to the brim with enemies and goodies and secrets, so you have much to look forward to. So first things first, let's climb up. I'm gonna show you where the second secret of the level is located. It's a, it's an interesting one, I mean, uh, both in a frustrating and just a mysterious way. This, my friends, as you can see by the weird uh, floor glitch, is an elevator. If you step here, the door behind you should close and take you up, but nothing is happening and you might be wondering why. What actually triggers this elevator, powers it up, so to speak, so that this happens, is picking up the third trident. So we're gonna have to pick it up, do just a bit of backtracking, not too much, and then trigger this elevator. Until then, nothing happens. This is really vicious because you have found the secret, you just haven't been able to trigger it, so you might be thinking you did something wrongly, but you didn't. Again, it's just one of those Tomb Raider 4 things that infuriate me and make me feel sympathy for first-time players. Okay, and over here we get our hands on Uzi Clips, but first we need to get rid of the skeleton. So let's lure him to the shallow pit uh, next to the elevator. We can use that, even though it's very shallow, to destroy him very easily. Okay, and I want to face down... Ah, finally! I really wanted to capture that on the camera. What will happen to a skeleton that will fall down? So there you see it. The bones just disintegrate and dust particles appear. So now we have final proof. Our paranormal mystery solved. Okay. Now, there are four jars, but it's only the first one uh, that contains the Uzis. Lara, come on. I really wanted you to shoot all four of them in one row, but nah, not as cool. And here, which looks like an entrance, is in fact a dead end, well, not entirely, it's a way back from up top. You can use this to climb back from the middle level of this part of the catacombs to the bottom one where we are right now, but I have a better one figured out, because this way you would take damage. I will use the ledge over there to get down here. That's the middle level, this is the bottom level. It's very confusing from this perspective, you feel like a rat in a maze, but it's actually very simple. Now, another skeleton will appear, so let's lure him into the pit over here. Uh, did we lose him? I think he might have entered the alcove. Interesting. Oh, these guys are not very bright, are they? Do you need some help, my friend? No? Okay, thank you. You're an adult now. Actually, you're way past your adulthood. Oh! Ah! Great! So glad I captured that again. Perfect. Now, it doesn't matter which path you choose to go around this huge uh, block, but you just need to find the rear entrance. I think there might be some jars over here to destroy or not. No? Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. Well, now you know where we are anyway. So, uh, inside here is an entrance that leads up to a ladder, and there is a particularly lazy skeleton that refuses to wake up. Nevertheless, we are gonna kill them. Now, if you just shoot them by aiming... Yeah, l let me demonstrate that, actually. If you try and shoot them with a shotgun by using the look key and aim... See, nothing will happen. We pretty much just shot off his groin. Uh, let me choose uh, crossbow bolt. And fire. See, nothing. They just completely ignore that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our grenade launcher again, the only way to get rid of him, which is also gonna clear the tunnel of the urns. Ah, what a street sweeper. I love this so much. So there we go. And now we are entering the middle level of this right part of the catacombs, which sounds more complicated than it really is, but there you have it. There is also a top level which we will reach eventually. First of all, shotgun shells and a shotgun. Now, this is quite high. You're in for a long trip, my friend. Woo! <laughs> uh, I'm really doing good, you know, capturing that fall on footage all of a sudden, since I didn't manage to do that before. Happy about that, I really am. Okay, mine the large health bag over here. And let me explain what we are after here. We need to get to the top level. To do that, we need to get on the other side of this room, and you can already sort of see uh, the trident. That's what we need to pick up to pretty much 
uh, trigger the secret elevator over there, right? Simple, easy. Okay, now let's also summon up uh, two skeletons. Okay, you can just blast this guy down as he's trying to get here. Let the other one come to you and trick him like this. Lara, you're not supposed to blast them to save me. God damn it. How many times have we been through this? <laughs> okay, it's just her, you know, good natured, kind heart that does this, I imagine. And over here, it might not look like it, but you can already maybe see some blue color clipping. Uh, this is actually normal and white shot box of shotgun shells, so double the reward. Okay. Oh, yeah, we need to grab. I keep forgetting about that. This is a long one. And finally, we reached the ladder I talked about. The one when I'm trying to reach from up top, Lara will never grab even if I'm holding the action key. And the tunnel on the right is actually the path back that I mentioned. Uh, down there is where we destroyed jars and picked up the Uzi clips, if you remember. So you can drop down here, but you will take some damage. I would prefer not to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you a much better way to retrace our steps back into the Secret 2 elevator. Secret 2 elevator sounds like a bad translation of an already poorly named movie from 1980s, really. There we go. Shotgun shells, these do not trigger the elevator. I have tried and tested it. It's this trident that does. Okay. So now the best thing to do, pretty much, is to use this ladder over here to get down. Now, I'm not gonna do that because each and every time I have tried holding the action key, Lara never grabbed it. I don't know why. There's something about this part of the lever, uh, level which uh, makes the controls not register properly. Again, that's the way back which will cause us to take damage. So I'm instead gonna show you a better way which is also closer to the elevator so there are just advantages to that. Oof, risky, but okay. And there it is. So this is the window leading to the elevator. We can already see the shaft. The floor clipping is down there. So just drop here. You will not take any damage. Now that you picked up the sorry, third trident, right? Yes. You will enter. The door will close behind you and the elevator goes up. And you can already start holding the action key and forward and Lara will grab that at the earliest possible opportunity. And behind us again is the window uh, from which we dropped on the other side. So it's all connected. Welcome to secret number two with an overly generous urn. Let's see. Large health pack, white shots and explosive uh, crossbow arrows. This is just great stuff. And down we drop and guess where we are right now? Right next to the window leading to the elevator. So it's really wonderfully connected. I'm a big fan of this. Okay. See, not much backtracking involved from the third trident. We just have to climb the ladder all over again. But we minimize the damage taking. Now, if you do somehow manage to grab the ladder to reach down, you will not even take that small sliver of health damage that I did when trying to make a safety drop from the platform above. But literally, I've played through this level about five times, and each and every time Lara never grabbed the ladder when I made a jump. Also, the frame rate decreases here. There is some kind of performance issues in particular parts of the levels in Tomb Raider 4 happening on my computer. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Okay, now if you make a couple of steps forward, you will summon another skeleton that will try to kill you. Uh, instead, go here first, so that in relative peace and comfort, you can pick up a small health pack and what I believe are, yes, white shot shells. Again, very easy to miss, but that's what I'm here for. Okay, and now we can summon up the skeleton. There he is. So, let's meet him and greet him. Let's be a proper host with a loaded shotgun. Get out of my lawn, out of my property. Okay, come on, boy. Oh, all right, cool, perfect. That's one undead Greek soldier down. Oh, oh, yeah, huh, that, uh, secret number four. We can't get to it yet. We need to trigger it in secret number three. The plot thickens. So, let's use the rope just to get across the ledge. I think you can use the rope to jump in there, but I um, actually haven't tried that, but it's probably going to be very dangerous. It's better just to use the ledge here for that. Oh my god, that was an epic, unnecessary jump. And again, let's get rid of this gentleman over here. 
okay and this right here as i said is secret number four which can be opened only by stepping on secret number three uh tile with its reward it literally the moment you step into secret number three the chime will sound and a camera sweep will show you that secret number four has opened they just connected like that and make a grabbing jump here just so lara doesn't hit her head perfect and now grab it please lara how lazy can you get really thank you uh, uh, above here will be another lazy sleeping skeleton okay by now these are becoming fairly common <laughs> those feet are kind of funny so again what we can do you know I, I guess we can awaken him by doing something later and then maybe knocking him down with the shotgun I guess he's here as a nasty surprise for when we'll be backtracking for the secret but you know what since they're also urns I want to destroy them with a blast radius as well this is just too much fun ah, so satisfying Okay, and up we go. And here, I'm gonna show you how to unlock secret number three, which is, I think, the most unique and creative mechanic to unlock a secret in the Tomb Raider franchise so far. This is dodgy, right? These are This is a pile of bones Lara runs into, like it's an actual object. You can't pick them up or anything like that. What you actually have to do is destroy them. Now, there are two ways you can go about this. So, first of all, you can hit them directly with a well-aimed crossbow bolt, just like that, right? And there are other ones uh, further in the corridor that you can destroy like this. But I understand that the you know normal crossbow ammunition is not particularly valuable, but I prefer to use the shotgun by using the look key. And there you go. So this is much better. Uh, to my awareness, I'm not sure if the pistols can be used. Nah, it's too high up. But to me, the crossbow bolts are more useful and more rare than the white shot shotgun shells. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of them, so I'm going to use those to destroy them. There is also a third way of destroying the bomb piles, and that is the same way we are destroying sleeping skeletons, and that is explosives. And guys, I'm going to do something utterly wasteful, but so unbelievably cool that I have no regrets about doing this. See, this is a room with a bomb pile on the right and three skeletons surrounding the trident on the pedestal. I think it's about time I show you what the super grenades, the first grenade gun ammunition we ever found in the game, actually does. Oh boy, I'm looking forward to this. So let's line, uh, align Lara's head against the wall over there and lob a grenade. Oh my god. It pretty much cleared the room. Now, uh, what the grenade does, it it, it creates a splash damage, which creates three more grenade blasts. Now, usually what's supposed to happen is that one of those small grenades uh, from the splash damage comes here and destroys the skeleton over here. That unfortunately did not happen this time. It's a bit unpredictable, but still we cleared the entire room. So, when will this gentleman wake up, I wonder? My god, he's late. Oh! What? How? When? Uh, okay, okay, doesn't matter. So unfortunately, this wasn't as cool as I planned. I really wanted to clear the entire room, but you know, you still understand what the super grenade ammunition does. And that's what matters. So let's get rid of him the old fashioned way. And behind the pedestal where we picked up the trident, you can already see a bomb pile. So if you destroy the last bomb pile, the trap door over here will open. And this is in fact the secret number three. So let me do that really quickly. Uh, actually, also choose the normal ammunition just so that in the heat of battle I will not use the super one by accident. There we go. And now the secret has opened. You drop in, no secret charm. You actually have to step on the next tile over here with the crossbow bolts. And this will, as I said, show you the secret number four opening up. So it's directly connected like that. Now, before I use the ladder up there, which leads into the coastal ruins, not the Temple of Poseidon. I'm just gonna quickly backtrack for secret number four. Okay, so again, a uh, bit back, a uh, bit more backtracking is involved for this, for both secret two and four, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's nothing too bad. Look how close it is. It's actually a well-designed level, considering how connected everything is. And we haven't died yet. We haven't used the health pack. This is brilliant. I'm still a bit bummed about the super grenade not destroying all three skeletons, only two of them. But again, where the small cluster grenades will fall, that's always up to random chance. Anyway, 
Secret number four, explosive arrows. Whoa, large health pack, white shots and normal shots. This is a generous one, it really is. Now, we have everything. We have all the goodies, we killed all the enemies, and we have all the secrets. And most importantly, we have all four tridents now. So what we can do is actually return to the Temple of Poseidon entrance, right? So why am I returning up here? Well, what I'm gonna do uh, as part of my completionist playthrough and make sense of the entire coastal ruins area is now I'm gonna go up to unlock a hidden entrance into the catacombs, sort of like a rear entrance into catacombs from the coastal ruins, which is also gonna, well, I consider it a reward, but it's gonna cause two skeletons to spawn in the coastal ruins area, allowing us to land those final kills for that level. And then I'm gonna use the coastal ruins to enter the catacombs from the main entrance, which you know so well by now. And that will allow us to quickly get to the Temple of Poseidon entrance. So, it will take two very brief videos, but nevertheless, I hope they'll make sense in the playlist and will be interesting. So, let's just go up the ladder. Oh, and there are still a couple of more uh, urns to destroy. Yeah. Those are the ones I'm talking about. Interesting fact, if you go past the threshold with the last urn, you will end up in coastal ruins. If you didn't destroy the urns and left them here, when you look back, they will have disappeared. Then you can, of course, re-enter the level. It's actually a different instance and destroy them, but I just don't like pointing it out. Wow, okay. So let me bring up the statistics screen. This was our third visit into the catacombs, quite a long one and a very, very successful one. We have found all 33 items, we have killed all 28 enemies, that's actually 26 skeletons, that's crazy, and two air elementals, and we have found all four secrets in the catacombs level. So, with that warm and fuzzy feeling in my heart, I'm gonna make a save here, and I'm gonna see you guys next time in the coastal ruins, which we are just gonna use as a small deter to reach the part of the catacombs which has the Temple of Poseidon entrance and also land two very unique and funny kills. I'll see you there.